Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai, Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai, Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai, Bracket the Yahweh, Bracket the Yahweh Shai. Ka Halayim La, Allahayanawa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rorachach Wadash. Double honors unto the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well, Shalom. And to the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well, Shalom, Shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hope for the elect, the men, women, and children, listening and learning from the servants and prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, and the hearty Shalom to the sincere brethren, laboring across the four winds of the earth, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, Shalom. So this, this lesson right here, Betty, is going to go into the topic of us being changed physically. And that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on our Lord Yahweh Shai to come back and redeem us out of this physical prison that we're in as far as, you know, captivity. Also, these mortal bodies that get weak, you know, they die, they break down. A wicked society where wickedness is exalted and pushed throughout the whole earth you know, having to work and be in subjection to the heathen, having to, you know, pay taxes and whatnot. Ultimately, us being in power, you know, and uh, Lord's will, this lesson's edifying. And I was just thinking on, you know, those new bodies and having the ability to not go off, having the ability to eat natural foods, seeing the earth the way, you know, the sons of God saw the earth when they walked the earth, you know, the earth in its natural form, you know, no chemtrails, you know, no uh, whales beaching themselves and so on and so forth. Our people in order, the heathen in captivity, the heathen in subjection, you know, us, you know, brothers who are in the truth, we think about these things constantly. And ultimately, you know, what those new bodies would be like. What type of miracles are going to be done, you know, in the times that we're coming into. Because not only <clears throat> is the Lord coming back with everything that we desire in righteousness, you know, there's new bodies, you know, rulership, crowns, chariots, uh, so on and so forth. But also a lot of miracles are going to be done before the Lord cracks the skies. Thinking about, you know, things like that as well. Ultimately, this opening precept. This is Philippians 3 and 20. And it reads, for our conversation is in heaven. And that's what brothers do when, um, when they get together, you know, and eat chicken. So pre-camp, you'll be talking about, you know, prophecy, the kingdom, what 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 uh you know what what the chariot what the inside of the chariots are going to be looking like what what what's your how is shy going to look like when he comes back you know how's his garment going to look you know how are we going to look you know things of that nature we think about these things constantly you know as well as you know a plethora of other things <clears throat> this is philippians 3 and 20 and it reads for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who shall change our vile body. Because these bodies break down. These bodies get sick. These bodies get weak. These bodies are ultimately subject to sin. We fight against the flesh constantly. You know, fighting against that old man you know, every day. You know, that old nigga's looking to catch the faith, you know. Every day, you got to wake up and box that old nigga, man. You know, you got you to gotta wake up and, and fight the flesh. And ultimately, that's what we look forward in the kingdom of not having to do that. You know? Having the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. Be, being on autopilot with righteousness, man. That's what we desire. This is Philippians 3 and 21, and it reads, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned 
like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And we're going to be just like Yahweh Shai when he cracks the sky. Hey, that run. This is uh, real quick. I think that's in 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and 1. 1 John 3 and 1. Yep. <clears throat> this is 1 John 3 and 2. It, the point's in 2, but let's get both of them. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of the living power. Therefore, the world knoweth not, knoweth us not, therefore the, therefore the world knoweth us not, those who are outside this truth. They can't understand it. They, it looks crazy. We look crazy. We sound crazy. Because it knew him not. Because there's only a certain, elect, uh, there's only a certain select amount of spirits who are going to really receive this thing and really be into this thing. And that's the elect. First John 3 and 2. And it reads, Beloved, going into the house of David. Now are we the sons of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the sons of the Heavenly Father. Though it not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And that's going to be one hell of a sight, man. And it's going to be one heavenly sight to see Yahweh Shai and to see the angels, to see ultimately <clears throat> this place being taken down. That's what we desire. This place and all the wickedness that this place pushes to be no more. This is Psalm 63 and 1, and it reads, a Psalm of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O Yahweh Bashim Yahashai, thou art my power, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And that's what we live in, you know, Babylon the Great. It's a dry and thirsty land where you have the walking dead walking around all around us who can't receive these rivers of living water. And our soul, you know, our, our inward parts desire for this truth to be inside of us. As far as desiring that new body, desiring that house from the heavens. This is 2 Corinthians 5. <clears throat> and it reads, yep. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, and it reads, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. That's talking about that new body. For in this we groan, earnestly designed to be clothed upon our house, which is from heaven. And what does the scripture say? Esau, Edom, he will wear out the saints, man. Oh, man. Hold up. I think that's Daniel 7, 18. Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel 7 and 25, and it reads, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. There is no God, you know, I'm the most high. You know, we don't need the most high. We can make our own water. You know, my well is my own. My river is my own. That's the mentality of Esau Edom. And we can't wait to see this devil taken into power. Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the most high. And shall wear out the saints of the most high. You know, ultimately Esau Edom put in hell on us. You know, working 40, 50, 60, some brother 65 hours a week. You know, getting taxed on your paycheck. 
and then you at the end at the end at the end of the road as far as at the end of the at the end of the two week pay si pay cycle you barely got enough to get by you know what type of life is that that, that, that ain't living man you know being treated you know ultimately <clears throat> you know without any respect in the society because the true prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yashai they're looked down upon but that's the dynamic of the story because the Heavenly Father is going to exalt those who were abased in the society you know as far as you know the servants and prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yashai the true men of the Lord Daniel 7 and 25 and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and the times and the dividing of time. And we've been in Esau Edom's hands three times. The Greeks, the Romans, and Rome 2.0. And what's he done? You know, put hell in us. And what does the scripture say? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And that's part of the glory. You know, that's part of the glory of the kingdom of heaven. Is those same people who put hell on us, they're going to be in a lowest state. Second Corinthians, yep, <clears throat> five and two, and it, again, and it reads, Yep, for in this we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. And we have this truth right now, that, 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 uh, that garment, you know, that garment, that spiritual garment. So we're not walking around naked because, you know, this, this, this garment, that's symbolic of, you know, putting on the garment, symbolic of putting on the truth, having the understanding, having the oil. 2 Corinthians 5 and 4, and it reads, For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, crying out to the Heavenly Father constantly to destroy this place and bring his son. Hawashanawa, 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 Baba Kasha, Baba Kwasha, Baba Kwasha, the water, Aman, so on and so forth. For in this it's like if for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up to life. And we constantly are vexed with the filthy conversations of the wicked in this place. This is Psalm 63 and 1 again, and it reads, let's get this in the uh, blue letter. <clears throat> O Yahweh Bashim Yashai, thou art my power. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And what's the house of David in? The wilderness, you know, 2.0. You know, Babylon the Great. We, we have the walking dead walking all around us. Let's go to this word. Let's get this. Uh, this word, early will I seek thee. Let me see. Is that the one? No, let's go to thirsty. Let's read the precept one more time. Psalm 63 and 1. O Yahweh Bashim Yashai, thou art my power. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longer for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Let's get this in the NLT. <clears throat> Psalm 63 and 1 in the NLT, and it reads, O Yahweh Bashim Shai, you are my power. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you, waiting to be changed. Waiting from that, waiting for that, that house that we have that's in the heavens, that immortal body. 
my whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Isaiah 43 and 19, and it reads, <clears throat> Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And we have these rivers of living water in that dry land through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai among the walking dead, people who are thirsty. You know, you see Jake out there and they're spiritually starving. You know, arm falling off, you know, malnutrition, you know, spiritually. Walking by the camp, you see him, you know, with the sunglasses on and stunning shades and, you know, diamonds kicking and Rolexes and whatnot, not knowing that they're spiritually starving and spiritually thirsty and deaf in the neck up and pretty soon missile food if they don't get right. Isaiah 43 and 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. And Barakat the Yahweh Shai for these rivers of living water, for this truth. Because we were in the congregation of the dead before we woke up to this truth. And that's the mercy of the Heavenly Fathers. Even those wicked jakes who shun the word, they're even going to get mercy in the kingdom of heaven after they die the death of an infidel on this side. They're going to be able to enjoy the kingdom. They're going to have the new bodies as well, man. That's the ultimately the mercy of the Heavenly Father. Nobody's going to burn in hell forever. Not even the heathen, man. You're going to have to serve your captivity. And you saw Edom after a thousand years, you're going to be out of there. You know? But you're not going to burn in hell forever. You know? That's the mercy of the Heavenly Father. This is Isaiah 43 and 19. And it reads, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yahweh Shai. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's getting this truth, you know? <clears throat> Let's get this in the NLT. Psalm 63 and 1 in the NLT. O Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, you are my power. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. And it's parched in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Let's get the second verse. Isaiah, a like as Psalm 63 and 2. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. That goes into having this, uh, having this truth, you know, having the eye self to be able to receive this truth. Because that word, yep, yeah. that word for I have seen is chaza. That goes into mentally to perceive, to have sight, you know, to see, to have a vision of behold, look, prophesy. Because not only was David a warrior and a king, he was also a prophet as well, and a musician. To see, perceive, look, behold, prophesy, provide. To see is a seer in the ecstatic state. To see, perceive with intelligence. To see, perceive with the intelligence. To see by experience. And that's what the elders have plenty of experience upon experience upon experience yep to see behold that's a lot that's a lot of definitions right there to look upon to contemplate wow to choose for oneself and that's ultimately what the elect are they're chosen vessels from the foundation of the earth you know, to receive salvation, to receive those new bodies first. Adon Rathazah, we're of that number, you know, Lord willing. 
Mm. Let's get this. This is Psalms 51 and 6, and it reads, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Going into you having righteousness on autopilot, man. You having that new immortal body from the heavens. Ultimately, you receiving immortality. That's what Esau Edom wants to get. But that blessing was only given to the sons of Jacob, man. You know, the 12 tribes of Israel, starting with the elect. You know, but yet I'll say it the correct way. That blessing was only given to the elect and through the loins of the elect, our children, Lord's will be of that number, are going to be immortals in the kingdom. Because two-thirds of our people, they have to die on this side. Mm -hmm. Psalms 51 and 6, Thou behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yep. Sata, Sata, and that goes into inner regions, yep, inward parts. Yep, with the kidneys, you know, having ultimately righteousness on autopilot because the Lord said he'll put the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts, you know, roughly paraphrasing. Yep, in the hidden part, that's what I was looking for. Hidden. Satam. And it goes into to shut up. Yep. To repair. Hidden secret. And that's what this truth is. It's a hidden secret to those who are outside the household of faith. It looks crazy. It sounds crazy. To hide. Shut up. Yep. Let's get a few more wrap on up. I don't want this to be too long through the spirit. Okay, 22 minutes. <clears throat> Bear with me. Yeah, this is the one I was looking for. Uh, thou shalt make me to know. And that's you die. You die. Thou shalt make me to know. Yep, to know. Learn to know. That's not the one. So like it, bear with me. Let's go back. <clears throat> Psalm 63 and 1 again O Yahweh Bashim Yashai Thou art my power Early will I seek thee My soul thirsted for thee My flesh longeth for thee In a dry and thirsty land Where no water is Let's get one more Since we're in Isaiah Let's go to 44 Isaiah 44 and 1 And it reads Yet now hear O Jacob my servant in Israel whom I have chosen Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai That made thee which form thee from the womb, which will help thee. Real quick. Because ultimately, you know, those spirits, the elect, who are going to get those new bodies first, they were predestined to receive that from the womb. This is Sirach 1 and 12, and it reads, The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart, and give it joy and gladness and, and, a, and gladness and a long life. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. Going into predestination. Ephesians 1. <clears throat> this is Ephesians, the first chapter. And it reads, the third verse, and it reads, Blessed be the Heavenly Father and Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in HaMashiach Yahweh Shah. And what did we read earlier? We're waiting on that body from the heavens. You know? According as he had chose us in him before the foundation of the world, going into predestination, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And if you go into that word adoption, it's interesting. And that's the same word you'll see <clears throat> in Romans 9 and 4. Same definition. Ephesians 1 and 5, having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh to himself, according to the good pleasure of of his will. Let's get the NLT. And it reads, the most high decided to the most high decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Hamashiach Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is the mediator. We can't get to the heavenly father without Yahweh Shai and we can't get to Yahweh Shai without the heavenly father. Given the spirit to receive this word this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Let's go back to the KJV. Yep, having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Let's get predestinated in adoption. Having predestinated. Strong's G, 4309. Prarizo. Yep. Prarizo. And it looks like prioritize. That's, you know, it looks like prioritize, you know. Prarizo. It sort of looks like prioritize, you know, if you have a spiritual eye. To limit in advance. Predetermine. Determine before ordain. Predestine. Predestinate. To determine. Predestinate before ordain predetermined before decide beforehand yep in the new testament of the most high decreeing from eternity let's go to this word adoption adoption to children strong's g 5206 we are the we are the seer. And it reads the relationship that the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. And that's the same word you'll see in Romans 9 and 4. Because it's only the Israelites who are going to receive salvation. You know, as far as the only nation that he chose. Going back to Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, and it reads, Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen, and on, on the only ones, and the only ones, like it, who can hear and have the ability to hear, to perceive, is the hope of the elect. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, that made thee from the womb, which will help thee. Because the Lord has given us the spirit of fear. The hope of the elect understanding that, that the help is on the way. Ultimately, this word is what's comforting us and helping us along the way. And the different, you know, uh, 
trials and tribulations that we'll have to go through, the Heavenly Father is ultimately prepared us for those things with the life experiences that we've had. Isaiah 44 and 2, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. That word Jeshurun is Yashawan, which means the upright ones. Israel, that's what it's symbolic for, you know. Upright one, you know. Jerusalem, as far as Israel, in its ideal state. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Yep. Real quick. Let's get this one. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Ezekiel 36 and 25. And it reads, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And that goes into having that new body. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Because this truth cleans you up, but ultimately, you know, you still go off here and there. But that precept right here, Ezekiel 36 and 25, is talking about us receiving those new bodies. Lord's word, we're of that number. Ezekiel 36 and 25 Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you And you shall be clean from all your filthiness And from all your idols Will I cleanse you And it starts out with you getting this word And ultimately it ends with you receiving that new body Which we're desiring and groaning To receive man Now let's go back It's like I'm a little all over the place with this lesson Because I, I didn't You know put together a list of precepts. I just had a few precepts to go into and just decide to turn the camera on and just go right into it. Lord's will, it's edifying though. This is uh, Psalm 63 and one again, O Yahweh Bashim Shai, thou art my power. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. Let's go into this word thirsteth. Yep. Bear with me. Refresh. Okay, thirsted. And that word is tazama. Yep, to be thirsty, desire eagerly. A thirst, suffer thirst. And that's what we do. We we desire this truth eagerly. You know, we we made this truth our lives. <laughs> we our life revolves around this truth. You wake up, you know, you say your prayers, you watch lessons, you take notes, you watch the apostles, you watch different elders, you watch brothers from your camp, you know. Ultimately we become addicted to to to, to this to this ministry. And that's said in the book of Sirach, you know, the first the 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 first chapter as far as the prologue. You know. We'll just get it. <clears throat> this is Sirach 1. from this point right here it says when he had given much given when he had much given himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and other books of our fathers that's possessive 
and had gotten therein good judgment, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law. And that's ultimately what we've become, you know, addicted to this ministry, man. This is Psalm 63 and 2, and it reads, To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. And we're going to see, Adon Rathazah, we're of that number, we're going to see Yahweh Shai crack the sky, and we're going to see our enemies taken down, man. See him in all his glory. Let's get that word glory. We'll get a few more wrap on up. Yep, and thy glory, that word is a cup of wad. And we like to go into our words around here. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yep, abundance, riches, reputation, honor. You see honor a few times. You know, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Going into power. Yep, honor glory of men majesty glory splendor abundance riches poet the heart the soul and that's this that's what this word does it changes your heart which is your your la'ab which is your mind and it renews your spirit day by day you become a new man putting off the old man and ultimately the the climax of this thing is our lord cracking the sky and giving you that new body where you can't go off, man. This is Romans 12 <clears throat> and 1, and it reads, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And what do we do to do that? We confess the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and go out to the highways and the byways and tell our people to repent and tell the nations their judgment and prophesy. which means to say before and what do we prophesy the end of this man's kingdom and ultimately prophesying of the kingdom of our Lord Yahweh Shai who the world through ignorance calls Jesus Christ I beseech you brethren by the mercies of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy that means separate acceptable unto Yahweh Bashim Yahshai which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Let's get this in the NLT. Romans 12 and 2 in the NLT, and it reads, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let the Most High transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know the Most High's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because the Heavenly Father, He's perfect. <clears throat> and the scriptures say, be ye perfect. You know, Matthew 5 and 48, that goes into the understanding and doctrine. You know, strive for the masteries. Keep the law to the best of your abilities. So on and so forth. Now let's go into, because I had it. Let's get a few more uh, Psalms. Matter of fact, Isaiah 49. <clears throat> this is Psalm 63 and 1 again, and it reads, O Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, thou art my power. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh long up for thee. What did we just read in that word thirst? You know, the soul, you know, the heart, your mind, being renewed in your mind. You know, ultimately him changing our bodies. That's what we're looking forward to, man. 
ultimately, uh, but yet the first step of, of, of that happening is you being transformed in your mind, you being renewed in your mind. putting on that new man day by day my soul thirsts for thee my flesh longer for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is a land without any order where where darkness is as light and light is you know and and light's treated like darkness psalm 63 and 2 to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in thy sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Let's get the next one. I will bless, thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. And the scriptures say that in the last days we will remember ourselves and we will call upon the name in the land of our captivity. This is Isaiah 49. Yep, this is Isaiah 49. And it reads, Isaiah 49. Let's get five. And it reads, And now, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shema Shai, that formed me from the womb to be his servant. What did we just read in Isaiah 44? Isaiah 44. down here somewhere yeah Isaiah 44 and it reads yet now hear O Jacob my servant in Israel whom I have chosen thus saith the Lord Yahweh that made thee and formed thee from the womb that made thee and formed thee from the womb which will help thee fear not O Jacob my servant and thou Jeshurun Jerusalem Yashawan upright one whom I have chosen going into the elect I will pour water upon him that is thirsty the, the rivers of living water upon the dry bones us waking up I will, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring going into the remnant of Jacob receiving this word in the valley of dry bones you know in the shadow of death you know the dry bones, better yet, receiving the word in the valley of the shadow of depths. Like I meant, I didn't say that right. The valley of dry bones, you know, which is the hope for the elect, receiving that, receiving this understanding in Babylon the Great, that wilderness 2.0. <clears throat> this is Isaiah 49. In five, and it reads, "And now saith the Lord Yahweh that formed me from that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord Yahweh Shai, and my power shall be my strength." <clears throat> and he said, "This." And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob going into Yahweh Shai and to restore the preserved of Israel. And I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles going into the Israelite foreigners waking up that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. And that's what Yahweh Shai's name means, salvation. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shai, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to whom it's like to him who man despiseth, because we're despised among these nations. We're looked at as, you know, niggas, spiggas, porch monkeys, prairie niggers. That's what they call the tribe of Gad, the so called Native Americans. To him whom the nation abhorreth, 
to a servant of rulers. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7, I've seen, you know, servants, you know, upon horses and princes walking upon the ground, roughly paraphrasing. Let's just get it. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. It might be 6, but let's see if it's 7. Yep, and it reads, I have seen servants upon horses, talking about Esau, Edom, and great power, and princes, Yasha Allah, the princes of the power, the sons of God, walking as servants upon the earth. And that's all part of prophecy. So the Heavenly Father can exalt the low tree and take down the high tree. Lift a beggar from out of the dunghill. This is <clears throat> Isaiah 49 and 6. Isaiah 49 and 7. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yashai, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him who the nation abhorred. These nations hate us, man. They're our enemies. Especially the so-called white man, man. That's public enemy number one. So Yasha Allah. Starting with, the, starting with the wicked elite, the elite bankster. The elite banksters. To a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel. He shall choose thee. He shall choose Jacob. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai in an acceptable time have I heard thee and in a day of salvation, I have helped thee. Fear not. You know, fear not. Help is on the way, man. And ultimately, salvation and those new bodies are coming as well. And I will preserve thee and will give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. And that's what he's going to do. You know, he's going to put those law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. He's going to change us, man. And he's going to give us joint heirs, you know, rulership with Yahweh Shai. The heathen for our inheritance. As many, you know, as many women as you can handle, you know, and some more. Isaiah 49 and 9, and it reads, That thou mayest say to the prisoners, and that's what we are. We're prisoners, prisoners of hope, prisoners in the form of in captivity and prisoners in chains of darkness, sinful flesh, waiting patiently upon the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai to change us, man. I can't stress that point enough because that's one of the things I was, I was thinking of, you know, through the spirit. When I was reading earlier today, I was like, man, I can't wait. I don't write this out, I'm that number, I'm of that number. To be out of this flesh. <laughs> we want those new bodies, man. You know, we we want to ultimately we're waiting patiently for the Heavenly Father's Son to change us, man. Physically change us. To be just like him. Isaiah 49 and 9. And it reads that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, to them that are in darkness. Our people are in gross darkness. Show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in all high places. They shall neither, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the sun nor, neither shall the heat or sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. This truth, man. You know, going into the opening precept, Psalm 63 and 1, and it reads, O Yahweh Bashim Yashai, who art my power, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsted for thee. 
My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And where did David say this prayer? In the wilderness of Judah, man. get uh, Romans 9 we'll, we'll end here and it's like it from my uh, terrible reading today bear with me this is Romans 9 and 22 and it reads let's get 23 let's get 22 as well it reads what if the most high willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction that's going into the heathen nations Esau, Edom, and two-thirds of our people. They're uh, the vessels of wrath, you know, fitted for destruction. Those who are in Babylon the Great and those who are ultimately walking around in gross darkness and the wine and philosophies of Babylon the Great. Those who are in the other parts of the earth, you're going to be enslaved, you know, Romans 9 to 23, and it reads, And that he might make known the riches of his glory to the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, which he had afore prepared unto glory, going into predestination. The Heavenly Father made the perfect honor system because you don't know if you're the elect or not. Going into us being prisoners of hope. Let's get this last uh, couple words right here and we'll, we'll wrap on up while we've been going. This is uh, Romans 9 and 23 and it reads, And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Let's get a couple of these. Yep, which he had might to make known in that word. Strong's G, 1107. Norizo. Norizo. And it goes into make known, declare, certify. Give to understand, to make known, to become known. And then, shall it be known who are my chosen? Be recognized. To know, to gain knowledge of, have thorough knowledge of. In earlier Greek, it means to gain a knowledge or to have a thorough knowledge of. And the men who he set up, they have a thorough knowledge of what it, what it is needed to receive salvation, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Certify, declare, make known. Yep. Let's get this word glory. Glory. And it reads in the New Testament. Get down right here. The kingly majesty, which belongs to him as supreme ruler, majesty in the sense of the absolute perfection of the deity. Well, through what? Through through giving us those new bodies, man. I can't stress that enough. We're going to be changed. I don't write this eye aware of that number. This is Psalm 17. This is Psalm 17. And 15, and it reads, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Actually, that may be the title, because I was looking for a title for this video. Yeah. Psalm 17 and 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. 
I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Going into, you know, David, you know, longing to receive that new body, man. And the house of David is longing to receive those new bodies. Ultimately, you know, and everything that comes with those new bodies. Rulership. The planet renewed and refreshed into a paradise. Our people in order, our women in order. Even wicked Jake, you know, they're going to have those new bodies, man. When they were born, they're going to be ultimately immortal, you know. That's the mercy of the Heavenly Father, man. That's what's coming to our nation of people. Even those who die on this side, you're going to be reborn in the kingdom and you're going to be immortal. You're going to get a new body. Everybody get a new body as far as the nation of Israel is, con is concerned. The kingly majesty of the Messiah, which the joint heirs are joint heirs and rulers in. Yep. The absolutely the absolutely perfect inward or personal excellency of Hamashiach. Woo! The absolutely perfect inward or personal excellency of Hamashiach, the majesty. And that's what he's going to give his men. They're going to be just like him. We just read it. You know, 1 John 3 and 2. We shall be just like him when he appears. Let's get it again. 1 John three and two it reads beloved now are we the sons of the most high do it not yet appear what we shall be because we don't know what the new bodies are going to feel and look like we we have you know a we have thoughts you know here and there you you have certain brothers that have had visions you know and so on and so forth but we don't exactly know what the inside of the chariot looks like, you know, how many planets there are, and, you know, the constellations. We're going to have all that knowledge in the kingdom. In his perfection, us perfected. Beloved, now we are the sons. Beloved, now are we the sons of the living power. Though it not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is we're going to be like him being changed yep the glorious condition and blessedness into which is appointed and promised that true we know the apostles were first called Christians in Antioch the apostles the disciples, they were all Israelites. That true Israelites shall enter after their Savior's return from heaven. And what's going to happen? Let's get it again. Philippians 3 and 20. And it reads, for our conversation is in heaven. Going into our mind state. You know, our conversations that we have with each other when we're talking to each other. We're constantly talking about the kingdom, rulership, Esau, you know, being taken down. You know, brothers have spiritual conversations when we, you know, break bread and whatnot. What's this going to be like? What's that going to be like? We can't wait, you know. Talking about prophecy and whatnot, this place being destroyed once again. Because that's a part of the Lord returning is this place being destroyed and him setting up his kingdom. And changing us changing the planet Philippians 3 and 20 for our conversation is in heaven but America is going to be destroyed from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach who shall change our vile body let's get this word vile vile foul extremely unpleasant because this is a house as far as these bodies that house our spirits that ultimately break down and fade away you know V 
these are, are, are prisons. <laughs> these, these vile bodies are prisons, you know, to the, to, the, to the spirits of the immortals, man. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned, un, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Getting that body that's just like his. According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. This is Romans 9 and 22, no, Romans 9 and 23 again, and it reads, <clears throat> and that he might make to know, it's like, and that he might make known, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which afore prepared, which he had afore prepared unto glory. I'm going to read it again. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy going into the hopeful elect. Those are the vessels of mercy. The vessels of wrath is two thirds of our people. Esau, Edom, and the heathen. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, the elect, which he had afore prepared unto glory going into predestination which you, you know we covered a little earlier let's get what you had afore prepared and that for which you had afore prepared prepared to prepare beforehand to prepare before to make ready beforehand ordain that's the same word we've seen in predestinate you know that's the same word we see in adoption ordain before prepare let's get it again Ephesians 1 and 6 and it reads Ephesians 1 I think it's about 4 Ephesians 1 and 5 and it reads let's get a uh, 3 on down we'll close on it right here Ephesians 1 and 3 blessed be the heavenly father Blessed be the Most High and Father of our Lord Yahmashiach Yahawashai, who hath blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach Yahawashai, according as he had chosen us with him. I'll read again, so like it from my reading today. Ephesians 1 and 4, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's get this word chosen. As he had chosen, and that's a Klegamai. Strong's G, 1586. Eklegamai. Eklegamai. Yep. Thayer's lexicon. Eklego. Eklego. And it goes into right to the point of the Most High choosing whom he judged fit to receive his favors and separated from the rest of mankind to be peculiar his own and to be attended continually by his gracious oversight by the angels, i.e. the Israelites. That's who the chosen is of the Heavenly Father. And you have a chosen of the chosen going into the Israel of the Most High, the elect. That's what it's all about. The Heavenly Father choosing Christians, Israelites, as those whom he set apart from the irreligious multitude as dear unto himself, and whom he has rendered through faith in Hamashiach Yahawashai, citizens in the Mesen in, in, citizens in the Messianic kingdom. Yep, so that the ground so that the ground of choice lies in Hamashiach and his merits only. Yep, hearken, James 2 and 5, hearken, my beloved brethren, going into the house of David. Had not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to them that loved him? And he's coming back to give crowns to those men. First Timothy 4, I think it's about 12.
think that might be Timothy. First Timothy four and twelve. I should have just Googled it, my bad. Yeah. Four and eight. Second Timothy four and eight. Second Timothy four and eight and it reads Henceforth Let's read the uh easy to read version let's see what it says first timothy 4 and 8 and it reads now a prize is waiting for me the crown that will show i am right with the most high the lord yahweh shai the judge who judges rightly will give it to me on that day what well, on the day of crowning this said in the book of second is the second chapter yes he will give it to me and to everyone who is eagerly looking forward to his coming. And that's the spirit. Everyone that is looking forward to his coming. Yep. So I'll end it right there. I mean, pretty much at the points. You don't want to drag the point. Uh -oh. You know, once again, Lord, to you're edified. And in closing, I'm going to close on out. I'd like to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Kodash, double honors unto the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well, Shalom, unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well, Shalom, Shalom. Peace, love, Salutations and blessings unto the hopeful elect. Matter of fact, let's get this. Ephesians 1 and 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Hamashiach Yahweh to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he had made us accepted in the beloved. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's beautiful, man. So I'm going to close on that right here. You know, once again, you were edified. Lord's will you were edified. And in closing, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Kodash. Double honors unto the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well. Shalom. Unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful the elect and the hearty shalom to the sincere brethren laboring across the four winds of the earth, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, shalom.